we are going to create this little painting of a baby deer and you are going to need a piece of watercolor paper for this project I like to put washi tape around the border make sure you press it down and that's really nice because you can peel it off after you're done with your painting and it'll give you a nice little frame okay you don't have to use washi tape if you don't want it's just a nice little thing to have you're also going to want to do a pencil sketch of the deer um, make sure that you don't press down really hard on your paper you want your pencil lines to be really nice and light like mine are and uh, if you accidentally happen to press down really hard then just take an eraser and erase some of those hard lines um, the pencil drawing is really just a nice little guideline for you when you're painting in some of your shapes okay now what we're going to do is start out with um, just some clear water and I'm taking my medium sized brush and I am painting water on the paper I am not going to put down any paint just yet so I'm going to put some right on his back right here on his legs he's kind of curled up in the grass so this is going to be a really nice little painting here we're just going to work on the deer first and then afterwards we'll go ahead and paint the background so a couple of strokes of water here now the whole idea of putting um, the water down on your paper is that it makes it uh, much nicer when you go ahead and paint your washes over the top because we are wanting to do a painting of our deer and he has really kind of soft fluffy fur and so you want to be able to use a technique that is going to show that now I have this really nice brown here on my praying palette you can see that I have my own color palette that I usually work in the studio and I'm also using a praying palette because it's quite a nice little inexpensive palette that you can use if you're just starting out with watercolor you are going to need a mixing surface and that's what this is over here so you can use a plate or whatever it really doesn't matter for mixing your colors so we can take the brown and just make a little bit of puddle on your palette now another thing you can do is also take some orange do you notice how I'm uh, taking my brush and swishing it in the water a couple of times before I grab my colors that is so important to remember to do that because if you don't uh, rinse your brush out between colors then what happens is all these colors get muddy really fast okay so now I have this gray color and I'm gonna start using the tip of my brush and stroking some little dashes of color right on his head right down towards his nose okay and you can see when you're painting the anatomy of a deer how important it is to have that pencil sketch isn't it because it kind of gives you a road map of where you are going to be putting your washes I'm putting a couple little strokes for his ears right there and also right on the edge and we can also start painting in the curve of his back okay and also right around here just getting some of those colors and now one little thing that you want to observe about deers is they have spots so how do you put white spots for watercolor well there's a couple of different ways that you can do it one is you can go ahead and create a little circle with a white gap in the middle just like I am okay and what that is is it's leaving a little white gap for the spots just like this you kind of paint a round circle and then you paint in between so you can do it like that um, the other way is I'm going to show you later on is you can come over the top with some white paint so either way will work and here I am just making these little gaps in between and also there is one other way that you can do that is you can get a corner of a tissue or a paper towel and this only works when your paint is really wet you can just press it into the paper and it helps lift out some of the color okay so that is also a great little technique and remember this is really important that you do this when your paper is uh, not damp um, not too 
wet, should I say, you want your paper to be um, damp. Because when it's damp, then that means that the paint will still spread, but it doesn't go everywhere. It kind of still stays where it needs to. Okay. And I really love using this technique because it really does remind me of soft, fluffy fur. And then I'm going to do a few more little spots in places where maybe I didn't capture all the spots. That will be where I can show you how to use the white paint over the top. And I'm just creating a few little sketchy marks right here using the tip of my brush. And especially right under the chin, coming into the color. Now, you might run out of color just like I did. Don't worry about that. That happens all the time. So you just come back in to your puddle, rinsing out your brush, taking some brown and just a touch of orange, not too much. And that's a perfect color for our deer. And then putting some strokes downwards. Now, I left a little white patch there because this deer, that's his belly, is very kind of fluffy and white. And if you forgot to do that, then don't worry, you can just take your paper towel and you see how you can use that to pull out some of the paint. So um, you have to press it very hard into the paper though for it to work. And then of course we're going to paint right around his face and around his nose because what I am seeing is this uh, leg in front right there. And uh, And we're just going to pull this down. So part of his leg is hidden by the grass, so we're not going to need to, you know, paint that. Because we're really just focusing more on his body and his head, because that's what we see. Now I'm going to start putting some darker brown, mixing another puddle of that. I'm just taking some brown from my palette, but any brown is fine. And then you want to put some orange with it, because that makes a really good color and then right under the chin. Notice how I'm using the tip of my brush and kind of pulling it out. That's how you get a really good stroke for creating fur. As you kind of uh, put it down on the paper and then kind of pull it out a wee bit. Okay, and then right around the eye, maybe a little bit inside the ear. Right in there. And then I'm just going to go over with a slightly darker color, little tiny short dashes of color because we already have um, a light color, but now we want to get a slightly darker color and do little tiny dashes and that makes it look like we have some difference of color in there. All right, of course it's going to be darker right next to his little neck and right in there. And I think I want to put some strokes on this back leg, right in there, and also right in here. Now, if your paper starts to dry off too much, that means that you're not going to get a soft line. You'll end up getting a really hard line. So if you find that situation, then that's fine. You can just go ahead and put a little bit more water on your paper before you add um, your paint. And keep in mind, you never want to put too much. We're not wanting to see a puddle of water. It really is just damp. So wipe your brush off on your paper towel and just have a tiny bit of moisture on there and that will really help a lot. Now, I can already tell that the area around his eyes and nose has begun to dry off. So notice how I and putting more moisture on there. And that's what you're going to want to do. And then we'll shape this right in here. Kind of let it soak into the paper just a wee bit. And any place where I'm wanting to put that next layer, I have a little bit of moisture on my brush, wipe it off on my paper down, and then I'm just wiping over the surface just to kind of make the um, paper nice and moist. And then watch what happens when I put the color down. That really helps, doesn't it? Because we get those little strokes, little tiny dashes of color that really just look like fur on our deer. Right in here. 
Okay. It's now time to start working on his eyes and nose. So we want to get a small brush for that. That always makes it easier. You want to take some black and make lot, uh, mix lots of water with it. And then we can start to put down some color for the nose. Little strokes. Now be very careful that the other layers around the nose are like um, are dry because if they're wet then everything will start to bleed together. And if you need to use a hair dryer, you can use that over the top of your painting and it will help the layer dry so that when you go to do the nose, nose and the eye, you'll be able to get good results. All right, just painting that shape right in there. Notice how I'm using black from the palette and then going ahead and mixing um, water with it. And then I'm going to rinse my brush out. And then I'm going to put a little bit of water up here so it kind of blends and pull the color upwards. So already he's really starting to take on shape, isn't he? Um, I'm going to switch to a small brush right now and show you how I'm going to do the eyes. I'm going to take the exact same mix little bit of black, lots of water with it so it's nice and thin and the eyes are sort of a triangular shape. I'll show you how I paint them. I put one stroke up here and then I'll bring it across because that's where the eyelid is and then we'll do the exact same thing on the other eye. We'll put a line across here and then we're going to bring it down. We really want to get that shape and uh, I think it'll, it'll help you a lot if you do one eye and then you do the other one. Now underneath the eye there's like a little curve, almost like a C, and uh, I'll show you what that's like. You take the tip of your brush and then you make your little curve and then you move over to the other eye. Okay, that is the outline of our eye. And then you're going to want to paint in the dark center but you can also leave a tiny little white spot for the highlight. If you forget to do that, don't worry, you can always use a gel pen to create the highlight. The highlight is what makes your deer look like he has a realistic eye. So we color it in basically with our black paint and just leave this little white spot. And we're going to do the same thing on the other one, just paint around and then we'll see this teeny weeny little white spot right in there. Okay? So already those eyes are starting to come alive. Now I'm going to go into my black paint and I'm going to paint a darker line right on the base of the deer. I want to put a couple of little nostrils in here. And using the tip of my brush right under here is another line. So there we are, starting to come together. Now I'm going to go for some blue. That's pretty dark, isn't it? Mixing some black and blue together will give us a nice bluish gray. And this can be a really good color for just adding a little bit of the details around the ears because there's a lot of white, but sometimes if you use a bluish gray, that will really help you. Um, show white fur. Just a little bit of that. It's nice and soft and light and I'm using lots and lots of water with it right in here and also right on the nose. We can use the exact same color so it all blends together. And then right underneath its belly, it's definitely got some soft fur. So we can just use some of this mix. It's blue and black together, and it's very, very watery with our little brush. And once again, we're going to make some little strokes to show the fur underneath its belly right there. Maybe a little bit of a line here. There's a shadow. There's a little shadow right on the corner right in here. And 
Okay. We're going to let this dare completely dry off. And while that's happening, we can actually start working on the grass. So I like to take a big brush, just with clear water, and paint around the deer. I'm only going to put down the water first because it's going to be important um, for us to go ahead and make a nice background. Coming close up here, right in there. Okay. All right, now we can go ahead and let's go mix some yellow into our blue so you can get a really nice green. There's a lot of different ways that you can create green. You can use it straight out of your pan or you can mix your yellow and blue and sometimes you get some interesting greens when you do that. And I even took a little bit of the black. Look at that. That really kind of looks like grass to me. And then we're going to start out with making a whole lot of these curvy little lines. And notice how this almost looks like an X. Because this is what real grass looks like. It grows in little clumps. And sometimes you'll get grass that grows in different directions. And definitely you're going to see um, a lot of different colors of green, even in a single clump of grass. So we're going to start filling the background in of our little deer right around him because he's starting to really come to life I think on the page. I'm going to rinse my brush out now, take some yellow, a little bit of black, and then let's get a little bit of blue, mix that in. And then we'll go back into our yellow. Making sure that we paint in some more strokes of color. So we went ahead now, this one has more blue in it. So we have two different kinds of green that we are mixing together um, on the paper and this really helps it look like a real grassy scene, doesn't it? And some of them we're putting over his body because they're kind of overlapping a little bit. So he looks like he's sitting in some grass over here. And it really helps when your paper is still damp as well because then you can get some nice blends with your color. Putting one over here like that. And let's mix up some more green right here. It's a really good green. Still very wet over here, so we're getting a nice mix right there and right in here. You want to make sure you paint in any of those little gaps. Now I'm going to Let's try this turquoise color here on our palette and mix it in with there. That's a really pretty green, isn't it? So I think this is a good opportunity for you to have some fun mixing up your greens and see what, what you can come up with. You can put blue into your green, you can put yellow, you can even put a touch of brown. And then start painting it down on your page with these simple little strokes making sure that we fill any of the gap. You might find that your paper does in fact dry off once you get to that area and that's not a problem because you can just go ahead and re-wet it again.
So the whole idea is just to fill in your entire page and if you want to put some other things in your painting, like maybe you want to put some sky or some flowers, you can definitely do that whatever you want to complete your background. So now I allow this to dry and I also add a little bit of blue for the sky, which you can do if you want, or you can just paint some flowers or whatever in there. Um, but we're ready to move on to the next stage and so I was going to show you a couple of more techniques that will help you finish it off. You want to get some brown on your brush, um, make sure that it's really nice and watery and then we are just going to come over the top. We're not going to dampen the paper but we're going to make these little short dashes of color and really using just the very tip of the brush this is going to help us get um, the texture of the fur and I'm just going to brush over and go kind of quickly just like that and this is a technique that sometimes you might want to do a couple of layers of this with different kinds of brown this really helps to build up the texture and this is what we're going to do before we add some of those white spots definitely think I see that we could do with a little bit of some of that right there and on the side and over here okay just with some watery paint just using the very tip of your brush and you can even go a little bit darker right here on this area if you want so that looks really good um, we are also now gonna do the last thing, I think I just want to show you how to put a little bit of the darker brown, but of course you do want to use um, a lot of water and maybe add a little bit of blue to it. So we're going to get a different color and right in here we can just add a few more little dark lines because definitely it's going to be in shadow right there, maybe right on here. Okay, so that's really good. We'll put another little dark area right inside the ears. Um, you can add a little bit of pink as well by simply taking some red um, and then making it really thin and I like to put a little bit above the eyes and also inside the ears and then we're completely done. So for the next stage there's two options. You can take some white paint. I like to use a paint called wash would be one paint or even white watercolor and once everything's dry then you can come over the top and start adding these white spots with a small brush and those are really important I think just to make this really look like a baby deer because they definitely have little white spots on them and quite a few of them. So there we go. So this would be one way to just um, put those in and wow there's a lot, a lot of little spots on his back. So we can do that. Um, if you don't have uh, white paint, so there's another option for you that can be really easy and that's simply to take a gel pen and just do the same thing, create the spots in the tips of the ear and you are pretty much finished with the painting. Um, just ready to go ahead and sign it. And one other thing that you do want to do is go ahead and take off your washi tape um, off of your painting so you have a really nice clean border and that makes it just really nice for um, going ahead and um, framing it. Another thing you can do as well is if you find that you happen to get a little bleed through like here that's where you can use your gel pen to simply just paint over. Sometimes that happens with the tape. Or you can even use white paint to just paint over any little mistakes that you have as well. Um, places that you want to correct, you can use your gel pen. 
or you can go ahead and use your white paint. So there we are with our finished um, deer painting. That was really fun and it's ready to freeze.